Hold on a second. Is that a fully 3D printed shirt he's wearing? There's something about segmented models that really attracts people. It's like it's almost magic or something. So in this video, I wanted to try and print the most segmented thing I could possibly think of. What is it? It's chainmail. Not only is it segmented in one direction, it's segmented in two directions. All right, that sounds easy enough. Let's make some chain mail. I opened up Fusion 360 and made my first model, which immediately failed. So with that, it was time to go back to the drawing back board the and drawing actually board. try and use my brain. At the most basic level, chain mail consists of two different links that can be duplicated in two different directions. It's actually kind of tricky to make a model that's optimized for 3D printing because you have to maximize the space in between all of the links, which is like an absolute nightmare. With that being said, I pretty much just eyeballed it. I figured it was probably 95% efficient. Just like with anything, 80% of the work can be done with 20% of the effort, but if you want that extra 20%, it's usually not efficient to go after it, so I just stopped here. Anyway, the guesstimation worked, and I got these big old meaty chain mail links to print out. And that was pretty cool, but I wanted to test out and see how strong this stuff actually was. So I decided to tape it to the side of a box and stab it because I'm whoa, an absolute whoa, whoa, freak whoa, of nature. Dude, chill. Just kidding, it actually feels really weird to show this on the internet. No, no, no but, man, I'm I mean, watching you. It was actually a cool ending because it bent the tip of the knife and didn't really break the chainmail that much. Insert nonchalant transition from stabbing things to next topic. After deciding I wanted to try to make the chain link smaller, I needed to see how small I could actually go. So I did a test where I printed chain links at varying sizes. And we found a size that was pretty good and wasn't too weak when you tried to pull it apart. So now that I had figured out the printer is capable of printing super small things, it was time to print out a big flat sheet of it. Resin printers are notoriously bad at printing out big flat sheets of things. Needless to say, this part was not fun. Well, I'm on my 11th try. That's a lot of tries. Did you have fun? This shit is so much fun. Are you winning, son? I fucking love this. I was built for this big flat sheet. sheet technically speaking if you gave an infinite amount of monkeys access to a 3d printer and a computer one of them would eventually figure out how to do this as for me it only took two weeks of me printing the same file and expecting different results but hey we did it and it turned out beautiful not to mention i printed this small enough to where it started to feel more like fabric than chain mail after this discovery i thought it would be a good idea to try and print an entire shirt with this stuff why is that a good idea it's really not a a good idea. It was honestly kind of just an impulsive decision. After my new goal was set, it was time to figure out how the hell you actually 3D print a shirt. Because you can't really just print it out all in one go. I did a little research and found this guy online who 3D printed a shirt about three years ago. His method involved printing out a bunch of these squares and then sewing them together with fishing line, which definitely solves the problem. It just seemed like, uh, I don't know, cheating to Why me. Why is that cheating? That's actually smart. He did 20% of the work and got 80% of the reward that's what you're supposed to do after making another impulsive decision i decided to try and make modular fabric here we go again version one of this design were these swirly looking chandelier thingy majiggers there's something wrong with you they were modular but they were weak and got tangled up super easily so i had to go back to the drawing board version two was a lot sturdier and could be snapped together in a tight predictable grid like this as you can see you're able to pull them apart and reconnect them sort of like legos now all i have had to do was print out a bunch of these sheets and I could just connect them all together. Problem solved, right? Yeah, definitely not. You still have to print out all of those sheets. Knowing me, I tried to print this out as quickly as possible, but unfortunately stacking three sheets on top of each other doesn't really work properly. There's just too many supports and things end up fusing together. I was also having trouble printing out sheets individually. I was getting a lot of deformed links and the supports were just very tricky to peel off. Then I realized it might be a better plan to support these things individually and print them out vertically. That way I could pack more of them on the build plate and they have a higher success rate. But of course this benefit also came with a cost. Your soul? Yeah, basically my soul. Since I supported each one individually, I would also have to connect each one individually by hand into the sheets. Also, I figured out how to print them in different colors, so I ended up doing a lot of that. Oh, and one more satisfying thing. To peel these things off the build plate, I just use an Allen key, and it makes it really efficient, and it's just satisfying. After figuring out how to mass produce these things, the next step was to sew them into a single thread. This thread in particular took me about an hour and a half. It kind of looks like a jellyfish. After that, the thread can then be used to make a sheet. Holy sheet. I used an old shirt to monitor my progress and see how much more cloth I actually needed to create. After I was sure I had enough, it was time to connect everything together. I ended up 
with these big old sheets of 3D printed fabric. Look at these things. Holding them up in the light, you can really see how it starts to look like fabric. The last step was to stitch up the armholes and put the thing on. Except I accidentally made it too small the first time. I ended up with a uh, scarf. Luckily, I had printed an excess of fabric, so it only took me about 30 minutes to re-engineer the shirt to make it a little bit bigger. And here you go. This is a fully 3D printed shirt. Sleeves, collar, and everything. 3D printed fabric really doesn't have that much stretch to it, so I had to slither my way in considering I put on that extra winter weight and I have a five head. Basically if it was one link short in the x direction I do not think it would have fit. But alas we did it a fully 3d printed shirt and it fits perfectly. After all this I could say I do not recommend trying to 3d print your own shirt. That being said I am considering selling 10 by 10 sections of fabric. So if you want to see how this stuff feels or just are interested in it you can check out my shop i'll leave a link in the description i really appreciate it guys please leave a like comment and subscribe thank you